Hello again, everyone. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting, and in this Resilient Entrepreneur podcast, as promised, in a previous podcast, I said I was going to talk about platitudes, and we're going to talk about platitudes today. So it's something that I find myself laughing at periodically because I find that there are certain people or even companies out there that they are kind of like the gumball machine of platitudes. And if you don't know what a platitude is, you know, I even Googled it and looked for a definition of it. And, you know, part of the definition is is something like, you know, a a a trite or meaningless statement, something that that really is it's just a statement oftentimes, but and you might agree with it. Uh oftentimes you would agree with it. Uh but you know it, it's it's really the beginning of what makes me laugh. Because those of you who know me, or those of you who will come to know me, you know, I am all about what are we going to do about that? Okay, so examples of platitudes are things like laughter is the best medicine. Yes, absolutely. Don't disagree with that at all. I 100% agree with that. And it's a really cool statement. Okay, but is that a is that a statement that we use to just smooth over a situation Something that's like, okay, we'll just kind of use that statement to sweep everything under the rug and, you know, keep moving. Don't look, don't look, nothing to see here. Or is it something that, and this this is where, for me, this is where I gravitate towards, what are we going to do about that? You know, so, you know, uh, um, there are other platitudes out there, and I really don't want to waste this podcast with it because you can find them a dime a dozen or, again, kind of like in a gumball machine out there. But there are other things that are actual management statements or quotes or different things that you might confuse with being a platitude. And I really look at these as a statement that's going to keep you between the guardrails or a daily reminder, something that's going to keep you centered on what it is that you want to achieve. So it's not one of those things that you read the quote and you're like, oh, that's cute. And, you know, you move on or maybe you read three, four, five quotes today, and they all make you feel warm and fuzzy. The question is, did it change your life? Did it make you do anything different tomorrow, the next week, the next month? Did it change the way you go about doing things? So I pulled one that I found, and you know, this is just one of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of quotes that are out there. Uh, Leadership is working with goals and a vision. Management is working with objectives. This is, and actually this was another one that I saw, a key to achieving success is to assemble a strong and stable management team. So those of you listening to this podcast, how many of you disagree with that statement? Absolutely. In fact, we want to walk into a restaurant and see what a a phenomenal team that's been assembled, a team that that understands the menu forwards and backwards. They've eaten some of the items that are on them, or many, if not all, the items on the menu. They know, they can tell you, for example, if they have plantains on the menu, they can tell you, are the plantains sweet or are they not sweet plantains? You know, it's things like that. And if you want to know, I prefer sweet plantains. But it's one of those things that, you know, the statement itself, we all agree with. Who wants to walk into a restaurant where it's just a collection of people who just don't give a flying fig about their job? I don't. So when we look at the team that we work on or the team that we have hired, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is like a super impactful statement. A key to achieving success is to assemble a strong and stable management team. Now, those of you, and we could get rid of management and just say a strong and stable team. Just call it that. So that sounds kind of like simplistic, right? Now, put that, put that statement into action, okay? Every, every employer that I work with is struggling with a statement right now. You know, and interestingly enough, I run into people looking for a job all the time. And every employer I talk to says, I'm looking, either I need people, meaning I'm short-staffed, or I need to find good people. And quite honestly, for me, I find it really, really odd that you have both camps saying, I need someone good. You have employees saying, I need to find a great place to work. And you find employers saying, I need to find great employees. 
So going back to my statement, a key to achieving success is to assemble a strong and stable team. Okay, well, those of you who have led and managed teams realize that that's not as simple as it sounds. It is not. But it is something that, imagine if that became the, the mantra, not just for the owner, not just for the manager or managers, but imagine if that was the mantra for the entire team. Because we are all into this thing together. I'm sure all of you would 100% agree with me that you spend more time with those people at work. Yes, I said those people. You spend more time with those people at work than you do your own family, than doing your own hobbies. You know, when you sit down and do the math of the fact that you are you have 168 hours at your disposal every week, you spend at least 40 of them with the people at work. So could you imagine, you know, as a percentage, that's a pretty big chunk of your week. So the question is, how can we, as an entire team, attract, assemble, attract a strong and stable team? Because when we have a strong and stable team, we can go to another person. When we have an actual real problem, let's just say we have a patient or a customer, they're upset, okay? And maybe they're upset with another person on our team, but they told me. Okay, well, I can either sweep it under the rug, which certainly doesn't do anything other than throw gas on the fire. I can go to the other person and I can say, you screwed up, this person hates you. Well, that's not going to go over very well either. Or I can go to the other person and say, well, Bob has the impression that you didn't give him this piece of information. Let's just make it real simple. Well, if I have a really good, strong, stable team, I can go to my coworker and I can say, Bob has the impression that you didn't give him this piece of information. Now, Bob already knows I got his back. I, Bob doesn't have to worry that I'm about ready to sink a knife between his shoulder blades. I'm not ready to throw him under the bus in front of the, my customer or my patient, and I'm not going to throw him under the bus to the rest of my team or my owner or my managers. So we have this strong and stable team. And as all I've done is communicate this to my coworker, and now my coworker can go fix it in whatever way it needs to get fixed. But it's because we're strong, and it's because we're stable. And how do we get to be strong and stable? Well, some of that is going to come from communication, communication of job responsibilities, job duties. It comes from training, so people thoroughly understand their jobs, not just the head nod, I know how to do my job. You've demonstrated you know how to do your job. You can also, as team members, whether, again, whether you're owner, manager, or team member, you can demonstrate, I've got your back. So if someone's fumbling with something, I'm happy to help you with this. I'm happy to teach you. I'm happy to find the person who's going to teach you. But all of this is I'm demonstrating to my coworker, my team member, that I'm here to help support you because I'm also hoping, as I'm paying it forward into the universe, that they're gonna, somebody else is going to do the same for me. So I'll start and go back to the very beginning of this podcast. Platitudes, they're cute, they're nice, sometimes cool to drop in conversation. But I would say if you're going to find those types of things, find the ones that are meaningful to you. Find the ones that you could literally pin no more than three on your wall, in front of your computer, on your desk, or wherever it is. And those are the words you're going to live by and actually implement in the next month, six months to a year. Not all the cute stuff, not all the things that makes your heart feel warm and fuzzy. I'm talking about the things that make you uncomfortable, but make you improve. So that, my friends, is a Resilient Entrepreneur podcast on platitudes. If you have questions about this one, if you want to talk about anything, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you. And as always, if you have interests in certain topics for me to cover, please feel free to send me a message.